Hello everybody, it is Whispering Storyteller here. Hope you are well. So for anybody who has not visited my channel before, this channel is dedicated to helping you relax and sleep and unwind after a long day. So I do lots of soft spoken videos and whisper videos. Um, so if you're here to relax, uh, you've come to the right place. If you do enjoy this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could like subscribe and comment it just means that i'm reaching out to you guys and helping to make the best possible videos that i can for you thank you christmas is all over now and um here we are in that weird little limbo land that is um between christmas and new year so as we gear up for the end of the year um, we all kind of reflect on what's been happening this year um, it was a great chance for me to um, answer some of your questions which is uh, something I've never done in the whole entire existence of Whisper and Storyteller so um, I've got my MacBook in front of me uh, we will load up your questions and I will answer them. So as some of you know, I returned in October of this year after um, a six year hiatus, which is a long time. So I'm going to answer some of your questions. So if I look at the, the page that I posted on my community page asking for your questions. Okay, so I posted this question um, two weeks ago. And the post read, um, for an upcoming idea, I will do my first Q&A video and maybe pick a few questions from you. So do you have any questions for me? If so, post below. And uh, Stephen came back and asked me, what have you been up to in your hiatus? Why did you choose to come back? And we're very pleased you are back. Well, thank you, Stephen. I do appreciate that message. Um, so what have I been up to in my hiatus? So my last video, I believe, was 2014. Um, I chose to step away from the ASMR. Um, it didn't happen overnight. I just found that I, I didn't get back to, um, to doing a video. And a week went by, a month went by, um, before I knew it, it was a year. So there's no conscious decision to step away from ASMR. It was more a, an accumulation of situations that, that was going on in my life at that time. Um, and in 2015, I got a brand new job. Um, in, it was a sideline step from my job that I was doing at the time. And I ended up doing a, a, a job that it covered media and administration um, it played to my strengths and it was a very very busy job and it took a lot of my um, focus to deliver that job um, and I absolutely adored it uh, I thought it was fantastic um, I actually also moved house in 2015 into this house here um, and again that was a massive life change uh, from going from one house to another, as you will, um, uh, as you will know, if you have moved house yourself, and um, moving in here, um, and then getting consumed in all of the alterations and decoration. Um, before I knew it, I was into 2016. Over time, um, I thought maybe Whisper and Storyteller was a thing of the past, but that's not true. That wasn't true and it isn't true because I got lots of comments from people who still remembered, who still remembered the work that I did. Um, I did put a lot of work into it back in the day and I remember, you know, creating videos was part of my weekly routine. Um, I used to have a little notebook, um, which I still have by the way. to write all my ideas in this book and uh, execute them um, and 
I just fell out of the habit and I realised um, over the last few years that Whispering Storyteller uh, does still have an audience. Now I confined Whispering Storyteller to the past. It was something I'd been and done uh, and enjoyed it. But then I came to realise how much of a, a part of people's lives Whispering Storyteller was, even though it was a small percentage of people compared to some other ASM artists. Um, you look at say, ASM artists who have just arisen in the last few years and they have thousands, million, over a million subscribers. Um, but the great thing about me is I stopped uh, producing content in 2014 and my subscriber base never dropped, it stayed exactly the same and I was so thankful for that. It was great to know that I still had an audience and I was made redundant from my job, the job that I was really enjoying. Um, I was made redundant from that job and um, I was let go in June of 2019, which left me kind of... Um, wondering and pondering what my next move was going to be. Um, so I spent all 2019 going on lots and lots of holidays. Um, I went to um, Australia for um, over a month. I went to some places in Europe. I went to um, Malta. I went to Spain. Um, I even went to the US um, with a, in a family holiday my sisters and baby nephews. Uh, we went to Disney World. So it was a chance out of life just to kind of recuperate and recharge the batteries and think about what it is that I wanted to do as, as an individual. Um, bearing in mind the skill set that I'd gained from my experience of working in the job that I had. Um, I didn't start looking for work until November December of 2019, which is just over a year ago, and that's when I discovered that um, things were not like I hoped they would be. Um, I went for interviews, I, I didn't get the job uh, for whatever reason, and uh, I went into panic mode because I'd spent all my redundancy money on uh, building a, a, another section of the house, so I had built in last year and uh, all of a sudden I was faced with the fact that I need to start earning in some shape. So I took on a job last January um, on telesales and found that I it wasn't matched for me, it wasn't, even though I am very much a people person, it wasn't something that um, I could see myself doing chained to a desk, um, taking customer calls one after another and I decided to walk away from that position uh, which was a really bold move on my, my part because I had nothing else to, to fall back on. And then um, coronavirus hit the, the country in March of last year and everything went into lockdown and recruitment freezes were everywhere absolutely everywhere and I had to um, stay home and completed the building work as a kind of project manager with the builders and I managed to get some job, local job in June of last year and it's just a, a local job um, of minimum wage but one that I'm very happy with, one that I'm so thankful for because in this current climate um, we have to grab what we can get. Um, I'm not quite sure when things are going to recover. It's one of those things. I spent a lot of time at home last year and that would plant that's and that's what planted the seed uh, for me to to come back. Um, um, I realized that I didn't have much equipment. 2014 it did all through wear and tear of my job um, things weren't working anymore I'd lost wires and, and connections 
connections and accessories. So I've had to start rebuilding um, some equipment. I actually got this off my siblings. They heard me mentioning my YouTube channel and um, they all bought me this for Christmas, which I got just the other day, a Christmas day. And it means I've got a decent microphone and this is a Sennheiser MK4, which is what I'm using here. So this is the first time that I've actually used this microphone and um, I haven't got my headphones in. Um, but what do you think? Um, yeah. So why did I choose to come back? It's purely because um, I had a lot of time on my hands, uh, a lot of sorting out of things and I got so many nice comments from, from you guys that give me the confidence to maybe think about coming back uh, and of course I dipped my toe in the water with the bedtime story series in October. Um, I didn't show my face and tried to um, narrate the plot line of, of four classic movies. Um, the reaction they got uh, was okay, it wasn't too bad at all, um, but the idea was just to see if there was still a market for my content, uh, and I'm pleased that there was, I really am pleased. So thanks for that question, Stephen. Um, moving on to the next one, French Whisper, who was one of my favourites, asks, um, what is my opinion on the current ASMR community? Whom are you listening to? Great question. Um, I think ASMR um, at the minute is massive compared to when I was last uh, in the game. Um, it's saturated. Yeah. Um, YouTube has got millions of channels, all with different accents, uh, male and female, um, different triggers. So now it isn't just a small community of soft-spoken or whispered content. It is now pigeonholed in so many different sub-genres. Um, um, and the idea is now there's something to fit each um, preference, if you like. Role plays and tappings and sound effects and triggers. Um, ASMR has got very, very refined People are now producing cinematic videos uh, with real creative flair. But I still think there is um, a lot of audience for this kind of simplistic approach, which is fantastic for me. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion of the ASMR community. I think there's a lot of choice, um, which is fantastic for you guys and for me. Whom am I still listening to? Okay, so my go-to ASMR artists off the top of my head. Um, I do love spiritual ASMR, you know, um, affirmations and talking about outlook on life. My favourite um, channel isn't actually an ASMR channel at all. It's called Spiritual unfoldment with John Butler and it's this really amazing um, old man who talks about philosophy and uh, and positivity and spirituality um, he's very religious but his message kind of rings true I spend a lot of time watching his channels because they're so short and sweet and uh, it really speaks to me um, gentle whispering Maria is still uh, going from strength to strength uh, and believe it or not, Maria and I actually started around the same time in 2011 and she has become the queen of ASMR, undoubtable queen of ASMR. We have watched her life change in so many ways over the years, you know, in her early videos when she had very uh, little equipment and she would film role plays before they were even popular. So if you watch Maria uh, develop a new relationship and get married and
and have a child and her videos are all so well executed and she spends a lot of time um, working out what works and she's really meticulous with her sound and vision um, and yeah she's absolutely brilliant and she deserves all the success that she has because she is so dedicated to her craft so well done Maria Whispers Red ASMR is still very popular um, and I actually met Emma once uh, in an old video I might have covered that off but Emma is still um, really really putting lots of content out and uh, brilliant content she's got lots of followers and again you know she's maybe the British equivalent of, of Maria uh, she's been on television shows here in the UK and uh, she's even done lots of collaborations so you know Emma is another fantastic uh, ASM artist who I really respect so when I'm not looking at the camera I'm actually looking at my screen here so one of the other channels I absolutely love at the moment is Southern ASMR Sounds and it's a lady named Mary and uh, she has got 310k subscribers and uh, she again is very regular with her um, posts and she has such a range of different um, content she does role plays with different characters that she's created she uh, goes into uh, stores and uh, rearranges their their shelves and films herself doing it um, and also one of my favorite triggers that she does is the librarian and uh, all the crinkle of the the jackets of the book um, and the sounds of the stamp on the on the book itself so Mary is um, a wonderful wonderful person and I really love her content and uh, yeah she's another one that I actually watch um, let's have a look what else do I watch so Atlas ASMR is another great channel and uh, he's only been with us for less than a year um, but he has got um, a speciality in cinematic ASMR um, and yeah he's just gone from strength to strength he's got a very niche approach which is very welcome yeah very very cinematic um, he did an ASMR noir collaboration and um, he has done you are a video controller so he's got lots of, of uh, fantastic videos I really recommend you to check him out um, he is is he British yeah he's fantastic so Atlas ASMR is definitely one to watch another one that I do love is let's find out ASMR with Rich of course um, Rich has such a, a wide range of topics that he covers which which includes philosophy maths astronomy and uh, he just talks in this really cool soothing voice and sends me to sleep in no time so he's absolutely one of my favorites for a few years now and uh, if you haven't checked him out i would definitely consider checking him out um, I will put the links to the, the channels that I've, I've covered here in my um, description and uh, if you haven't checked them out please do so I'll move back to the next question of mine I'll just go back to my page okay let's have a look Teddy Friedman um, asks, will we get a sequel to the Great Movie Ramble video? It's probably my personal favourite of yours. Well, thanks, Teddy. I do appreciate that. Um, the Great Movie Ramble was actually... Um, I've actually the book still here. I can see it. It's called A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. Um, and I think maybe I got halfway through it with the idea of going back to finish it. 
um, but absolutely, if, if um, you would like me to do that, then I'd be more than willing to do another ramble about great movies. Um, do let me know what you think of that idea. And post in the comments and let me know. Um, Forrest Sprague asked, um, I remember you mentioning working on a film back in one of your old videos. Any stories on the production of it? Yes, I think the filming question would have been um, Fog Island. Um, that would have been 2012, I think it was. Um, so yeah, I made a film. Um, I took a career break from my job at the time with this idea of creating a movie um, with a group of friends or anybody who wanted to get involved and to uh, try and get it uh, finished in, in, in a cinema and uh, show it for charity. Um, now, I did manage to do it. Um, so I remember it started, we started working on the film around March of 2012 actually played it in the cinema on Halloween night in 2012 so we did everything from um, casting the movie we came up with a rough idea of what the movie would be about and we we rolled with it there was no script um, and we gathered a cast from social media which included um, a 17 year old girl right through to a 90 something year old lady so we had quite an eclectic uh, cast and crew who all kind of came together to um, to, to make this, this production. Um, and the result was not fantastic by any means. Um, B-movie is probably being very kind. Um, but it was a labour of love and something we really enjoyed doing. Because let's face it, we didn't even know how the film was going to end. We just kind of made it up as we went along. So imagine a train coming down a track and we're laying the track as it comes. Um, it was a very challenging experience. But I think the biggest issue we had there was the fact that we didn't write a script, which is absolutely criminal for me being a writer. So this is the filming question. Fog Island. And... The idea was that it was um, a kind of a fun-loving slasher movie. So remember things like um, Friday the 13th and all of the 80s um, whodunit slasher movies. So this is region free. If I read the back of it, acclaimed DJ and single mum Nikki Frost arrives on Fog Island, an eerie and isolated coastal town. With a motley crew of misfit DJs, Nikki takes over Fog FM radio, unaware that their arrival will kickstart a murderous chain of events. Armed with an array of toolbox weapons, a mysterious figure hacks a path through the hapless pundits, leaving a bloody trail of retribution that will leave you guessing until the final heart-stopping reel. Who will survive the horror? of Fog Island. Now that sounds really frightening, but it isn't. It's played so tongue-in-cheek. Um, so yeah, I've got one copy of this actually left. So this is actually from um, 2012, and it of course features me in it. Um, I play a character. And uh, we did get a review from um, Lost Highway B-Movie Reviews. And uh, the review was, Fog Island was made with no budget and all love for old school horror flicks. It packs in some gore and plenty of laughs, making it worth the adventure to see. Now that review was very kind, uh, because it isn't a fantastic review at all. But I'm not, not under any illusion whatsoever. But I'm quite proud that, you know, I set myself a challenge to... to make a movie and I did I made the movie um, I followed right through with the idea from start to finish and uh, and as a result this is coming up 10 year old now but um, it was a good experience and of course um, I've made other films as well in the past 
So maybe I can tell you all about my movies um, in a future whisper. Uh, let me know in the comments section what you think. Any stories of the production of Fog Island? Yeah, well, we cast um, somebody in the film to play um, the role of Drew, which was one of the DJs. And uh, the gentleman in question um, stopped turning up for film shoots. Um, and I would ask him very politely, because I am very polite, I would ask him uh, when he was going to come, because obviously this was having an impact on everybody who was turning up. And uh, we got no response from him. So in the end, I had to actually jump in and do the role myself. Rather than having to cast the, the role all again, um, I just jumped in and did it and refilmed all his scenes with me in it. Um, and yeah, so it was just a real exercise in pure guerrilla filmmaking. Um, and it was a, an experience I'll never forget and probably one I will never repeat um, unless I had a script. <laughs> so Mouse Cop um, asks me, um, what are the best movies you've seen in the years while you've been on vacation from YouTube in inverted commas? Well, thanks for that question, Mouse Cop. Um, the best movies I've seen. So we're talking 2014 till now. Um, again, I'll try and remember some of the films that really had an impact on me. Um, Moonlight was a great film. Um, Birdman. Um, I'm a really big fan of Ari Aster. Um, I loved um, Hereditary. Um, I loved The Lighthouse. Um, I loved The Witch. Yeah, so um, they're the ones that spring to mind. Um, one of the things I was actually thinking about doing was um, a movie reaction. So I don't know if anybody actually saw the one I did for Christmas, which I had a lot of issues with. Um, I put a poll on my community page and asked which uh, movie you'd like me to watch. Because I'm a big fan of Cinema Rules and some of the other channels on YouTube which do movie reactions. Uh, that is, watching a film for the first time and actually recording yourself uh, having that experience and maybe just having a bit of narration around the, t around the way as well. And uh, I thought I'd give that a try and I filmed it and... Um, I found I had massive issues with copyright when I came to upload it to the YouTube channel to Whisper and Storyteller. Uh, the first said that their content was uh, copyrighted material um, and I then found out that um, the way around it is to show kind of no more than 10 seconds of, of the actual movie itself before it jumps back to me as the reactor. Um, so I did that but then found I ran into trouble with the soundtrack so what I did then was to um, upload it to my Google Drive and just give the link in the YouTube page, if that makes sense. But I think, you know, it's been a, a bit of trial and error. I think I've got a bit of a, a know-how around how, you know, a reaction video works. Um, and something I was going to do was to um, start doing softly spoken reaction videos. Um, because I've not seen any of the Marvel superhero movies other than Iron Man 1. Um, a lot of people get um, astounded by that fact, but it's true. Um, so I was going to maybe um, do that and maybe you could watch the movie with me and uh, I can tell you what I think about it. Um, so please do let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like me to do and I'd be uh, very willing to explore that uh, in the new year. So, yeah, um, Jake Bryant asks um, a review on some of your current favourite TV shows would be good. For instance, Netflix series. And again, I'm, I'm kind of quite big on television at the moment and I'm, I'm usually... See, the, the problem I find with YouTube and Amazon Prime and all those great services is um, there's just so much choice. And I find I scroll for making things on my watch list. And um, yeah, so I find I'm watching the the homepage with all the titles on the little blocks and tiles. 
I watch that more than I watch the actual movies or TV shows. Um, I'm one of those people that prefer to have little choice, even though it sounds absolutely mad, but it's true. Um, so ones that spring to mind in TV shows are, of course, Game of Thrones. Um, I became a massive fan of Game of Thrones, actually through one of the comments on my channel. Um, somebody on my channel asked me if I'd heard of it, and I hadn't, so I looked into it. And I was intrigued, and I watched it, and uh, I became so immersed in Game of Thrones over the years. Um, so much so, I bought the box sets. Um, I would stay up until midnight and watch the premieres uh, because we are a few hours apart from the US and the UK. Um, so, yeah, I was a big consumer of Game of Thrones. I loved the characters. I loved all of the twists and turns. Um, I loved the world that it created and how complex and intricate the relationships of the characters were. Uh, I was a massive fan, a massive fan of that show. Uh, the last series did get a lot of flack in regards to um, it ended too quickly and resolved itself unsatisfactory. Um, but I'm going to hold my judgment um, and maybe watch the whole lot again. Uh, maybe a little bit quicker, maybe one episode a night um, and uh, see how I think on the on the rerun. Um, but it is um, such a, a brilliant show. Um, I was so blown away by it. Um, it really is. Um, so yeah, Game of Thrones is up there. Um, other shows that I did watch was Walking Dead for a while, but I kind of fell away from that a little bit. I just found it a little bit slow going and I uh, didn't get back to it. Um, what have I watched recently? I watched The Act recently on um, Amazon Prime, uh, which is the story of um, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, the true story um, of... Um, a really unbelievable story it's hard to believe it's actually true but it was true um, but I did watch that and really enjoyed it um, I'm watching Vikings at the moment what do you guys think of Vikings um, so I think I'm up to series 2 at the moment and it's it's been going for a number of years but somebody recommended that to me and uh, I've started watching it and uh, yeah it's pretty good it's a slow burn but I know it's going to uh, become more and more complex as we move on. Um, so Vikings is something that I'm starting to watch. Um, what else? I watched The Haunting of Hill House, The Haunting of Eli Manor, which is all on Netflix. Um, I've watched The Undoing with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. Um, that played on our Sky channel here over Christmas period. Um, and I found that uh, really interesting, and I got through that in five days or so. Um, but I'm always on the lookout for something new. But I do love complex, complex characters. And other things that have been um, recommended to me has been the Boardwalk Empire. Um, um, what else has been recommended to me? Hmm. Um, Hmm, can't remember at the moment. But if you've got any, any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, Laura Gray asks, um, what have I been up to in the last couple of years? And there was any specific reason why I quit ASMR? Um, I may have already covered those, but I'll certainly recap. Um, so the last couple of years has been very busy, very turbulent with the amount of change that's been going on, which is probably normal in most people's lives. Um, but now that things have settled and um, I'm in a position now where I'm at a crossroads, just waiting for the coronavirus uh, pandemic to come to an end and I can start planning my next move and uh, what I'm going to be doing creatively as well, of course. But at the moment, I've got a, a, a regular job um, which bring some money into the house, which is I'm very thankful for. And at this moment in time, I'm very grateful for what I've got. And uh, I'm looking forward to what the future holds. Colin4051 asks, uh, what projects am I currently working on? And what do I do in my leisure time? 
So projects wise, um, I have got two feature scripts that I've written. One which was in pre-production. Um, it's a psychological thriller and uh, one that I really enjoyed writing. Um, but we were struck with some bad news um, in October or November and that was that our director, um, which was attached to the project, had actually sadly passed away. Um, and his name was Johnny Kravorkian, a really talented guy who'd worked on um, a film called The Disappeared and also recently made a film called Await Further Instructions, which is a British science fiction horror movie, um, which is currently on Netflix, or it was on Netflix here in the UK. Um, but yeah, Johnny passed away, and uh, we're obviously at the moment now trying to think, you know, how we can move on with the project and maybe attach um, somebody else into, um, into that role. But I think Johnny, if it does come to fruition, Johnny will always have a part of, of the film. And uh, we'd love to, you know, remember him in some way. I've also written um, a, a feature script called Stillness, which is a drama. That has got some really good feedback from some screenplay competitions. Um, and I have got um, a director and producer attached to it. Um, but at the moment, it's kind of gone very quiet um, I think there's some amendments need to be done um, it's a character study and uh, got some really great reviews from from readers um, and with a little luck I can hopefully get something into pre-production because that is the aim to do that I've actually written another thriller um, screenplay called Hopes 20 uh, which I co-wrote with a, a great writer called uh, Lee Betteridge. Uh, and again, this is a really spooky, supernatural thriller. Feedback from that one has been very favourable as well, but it still hasn't found um, a producer or director attached to it. One of my big dreams moving forward is to write uh, children's literature and adult literature as well. So I've got some great ideas that I would love to put into practice. Um, and again, I plan to do that very, very soon. But those are the projects I'm currently working on. And there's always something. What do I do in my leisure time? Uh, Colin4051 also asks. Well, in my leisure time, um, it's all movies. I absolutely adore watching movies, reading books. Um, I'm not so much a sporty person, but um, I do enjoy keeping fit. I enjoy the gym. Um I also a massive, massive music fan. Um, I play guitar, I sing. Um, so I'm a very creative person, always. Always got some project done in some description. Um, and yeah, so that's me. I've always got something burning away in the background. Um, he also asks, did I have any recent travels prior to COVID? Yes, I've, I've travelled uh, last year. I went to... It's still 2020, but in 2019, I went to um, Australia, I went to Mallorca, I went to Malta, I went to Florida in the USA, Europe, I've done Germany, Prague, I've been on a cruise ship and went down the Baltic to uh, St. Petersburg and Norway and Sweden, um, I've done Mexico, I've done California, I've done Las Vegas, um... So I've done quite a, a lot of travel, um, but only recently been exploring Europe more. Um, but I absolutely love traveling. It's a massive part of, of my favorite things in life. It's all about seeing somewhere new and having that time to relax and experience different cultures, even if it's slightly different cultures. Christian de Candia asks, do I have any big plans for the future? Any new film scripts? Um, yes, yes, yes. Um, I covered that off in the previous question, but yes. I've got multiple film scripts I'm working on and uh, multiple relationships with other filmmakers and directors and producers. Um, I've got um, novels festering away in my head, um, songs, 
tunes, lyrics, there's always something going on in my head. Um, isn't always good, but some of it's okay, <laughs> if that makes sense. But yeah, thanks for that question. Um, Tyrosine Treble 2 asks, may I request the Q&A to be done ear to ear whispered? Hmm, well, I actually haven't quite got the microphones yet. So I've got this microphone, the MK4. Uh, the plan is to get another one and then I can do a nice Maria, you know, with two microphones either side and I can do the whole whisper. But at the moment I'm quite limited because I'm pretty much new back in the, in the scene. Um, but the idea is I will certainly um, consider more ear-to-ear -ear whispers moving forward. But thanks for the, for the suggestion. I appreciate it. Um, thoughts on America's politics. Mm, politics is generally something I, I steer away from on, on social media um, because it's so divisive. Um, my opinions won't necessarily be your opinions. I'm aware of everything going on in the US at the moment with, with Trump, with uh, Biden. We did watch the, the political debates here in England, um, which were televised. Yeah. How do you feel about Joe Biden um, coming into office? Um, be great to get your thoughts. Much more viable than what mine is. So here in the United Kingdom, we're also going through a political upheaval um, with the pandemic is certainly not really helping anybody. Um, but the UK economy is, is very, very um, affected by the current climate. Um, so, so many genders in the equation from recovering from coronavirus, from tackling climate change, um, lots of things in the mix. And of course, Brexit. We've got Brexit here in the UK, which has really devised the country in a massive way. Darren Malone asks, how are my cats? Well, Darren, I've got one cat, but she's doing absolutely fine. And uh, she's right here asleep uh, with me. She never sound, kind of sits on my knee or on my shoulder or anything, but she always likes to be nearby. She gets a lot of comfort by just knowing that you're in the room. Um, so she, of course, is the mother of the kitten that I once had. So any of my long-term viewers will remember Pookie. Um, Pookie was a lovely little exotic short hair kitten I once had, who unfortunately passed away. Uh, and we got his mum as a, a from the breeder. So we took on a, a Pookie's mum, who's now been with us for um, seven years, I believe now. Wow, it's a long time. But uh, she is now about 15 year old and uh, she's doing well. She still rules the roost. Um, she still gets spot rotten and pampered beyond belief. And uh, Pookie... And, um, meanwhile, is uh, resting in the garden. We've got his ashes buried. Uh, he's gone, but never forgotten. But um, I do love my pets. Um, I love dogs too. Um, but we have got uh, Flossie at the minute. Um, and she's doing really well. But thank you very much for asking. So thank you for those questions. So this will be the last post of 2020. And I'll be returning back in... Um, early 2021 with some more um, videos so I do thank you all for being so welcoming for being so kind and helping me ease back into the ASMR world so please do post any comments you have regarding any ideas for future whispers or soft spoken videos um, I always love to hear them I read every comment and I'll try and comment and I'll try and reply if I can so I wish you the very best for New Year and I will see you very, very soon. Thank you.